Coming up, they piloted different planes on the exact same missions. But when these World War II heroes finally met face to face 50 years later, neither could believe what the other was telling him. I got out my picture of Miss Pitchell's second grade class. And there were 40 children in the class and there was one black boy. And I was standing right next to him. In the dog days of World War II, in the flak-filled skies over war-torn Europe, the paths of two American flyers would cross. One flew a heavy bomber, the B-17 Flying Fortress. The other was his escort, piloting a nimble P-51 Mustang fighter, keeping enemy aircraft at bay. One man was black, the other white. They never met face to face until 50 years later, when they learned of an extraordinary series of coincidences that had them living remarkably parallel lives. Italy, 1944. As part of the American 15th Air Force, Herb Heilbrunn flies bombing missions over enemy territory, piloting an airplane that is both a lethal weapon and an easy target. The B-17, a long-range bomber, is armed with a dozen machine guns and can carry more than 17,000 pounds of explosives. But it is slow and highly vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire and enemy fighter attacks. Combat in World War II was a deadly business. They built 12,721 B-17s and they shot down 4,750 of them. The Germans used to call them those tin coffins that the Americans flew in. To protect the bombers from enemy planes, American fighters, like the P-51, escort the bombers as they headed to battle. Some of the most successful P-51 pilots are from the 332nd Fighter Group. They are better known as the Tuskegee Airmen, African-American aviators who were trained at an air base in Tuskegee, Alabama. Each P-51 fighter group has their rudders painted a different color. The Tuskegee Squadron is known as the Red Tails because of their distinctive red rudders. One of the Tuskegee pilots, also stationed in Italy, is Lieutenant John Lear. We're always anticipating that you're going to be attacked and by a superior force, and uh, this is what has happened on a few occasions. During their two years in combat, the Tuskegee Airmen flew more than 15,000 sorties and shot down over 1,000 German aircraft. The Red Tails were a welcome sight to the bomber crews. The Tuskegee pilots never lost a bomber to an enemy fighter attack. Uh, yesterday, I fulfilled one of my ambitions as a combat pilot. I got one airplane. Fifty years after the war, Herb Heilbrunn wants to thank some of the P-51 pilots who saved his life many times over. When the Cincinnati native hears about a meeting of the local chapter of Tuskegee Airmen, he decides to attend. I wanted to find, if I could, an airman that might have escorted me during my combat missions over Europe and give him a hug for all he and all these other airmen did to save my life. This guy comes in and he, and, and he says, uh, you're John? I, I said, yes, I flew over in Italy and he gave me a big hug and I was, you know, kind of <laughs> wonder who this guy coming and give me a great big hug, you know. The men compare notes. It turns out that Lear had flown cover for Heilbrunn on at least two missions in December of 1944. The only two that we could really verify by mission sheets were two very, very tough targets, Brux Czechoslovakia and Black Hammer Germany. And uh, Brux Czechoslovakia was the largest oil refinery that the Germans had. And we hit it Christmas Day of 44, and we were on the target approximately 15 minutes. My airplane was hit uh, 89 times. I still have one piece here, that uh, piece of flak that, uh, that uh, came through the leading edge and tore some, some cables, and, and uh, that was my Christmas present. But their chat reveals more coincidences. Both men had wanted to fly since they were boys. They had both signed up for the military within weeks after Pearl Harbor. Both men worked in the same aircraft factory in Ohio while waiting to be called into service. And there is more. 
Both men grew up in the same town, in the same neighborhood. And remarkably, they attended the same grade school in the early 1930s. He said to me, you know, Herb, I grew up in Avondale and I went to a, a school that was a, an old estate, the Workham estate, that was converted into five grades and I was there in the second grade. I said, John, I lived on an adjacent street and I said, I was at that school in the second grade. Amazed by mounting coincidences, Heilbrunn digs out his old second grade class picture. He carefully examines the faded photo and cannot believe what he sees. And I went home and I got out my picture of Miss Pitchell's second grade class. And there were 40 children in the class and there was one black boy. And I was standing right next to him. He says, well, John, if that little black guy is you, man, this is getting real weird. I looked at the picture and it was me and I said, yep, Herb, that's me. <laughs> The local newspaper gets wind of the story about these two second graders reunited in combat in the skies over Europe. The pair become something of a phenomenon in Cincinnati. They are asked to give speeches, especially at schools, about their experiences in the war and about how they came together after years of living parallel lives. John talks first and towards the end of, of my talk, I always say, especially to the kids, there's one thing I forgot to tell you. They really liked it, that we were in the second grade together and we were eight years old and 16 years after that picture was taken, he's flying my wing and 50 odd years later, I find him to give him a hug for, for all he and, and uh, his fellow airmen and Tuskegee t uh, people did for me. We get letters from the kids, from teachers, from people all around commenting on what a great job we're doing, how, how, how important they think it is. We are really close. He's a wonderful man. I'm very, very fond of him. I really am. 